Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me on another video. So today's video is highly, highly requested. I've had so many of you guys ask, well, one for two of my craft room, which I'm not doing today, but I'll, I'll do that in an upcoming video. But we're actually going to be walking through my film setup. So this is where I film all of my YouTube videos. This is my craft room, which is downstairs on the main floor of my home. And so I decided today is finally the day where I need to show you guys my film setup and how exactly I achieved the look in my YouTube videos. So if you're new here on my channel, I do hope that you will enjoy this video and you will consider subscribing to my channel and also liking this video. And so if you wanna see my film setup, how I film my YouTube videos, where I film, all the details, all the good stuff, then make sure to stick around. So as you can see, this is my craft room. I love my craft room. It's really a space where I can feel inspired and I can uh, create videos for you guys and I just enjoy having all the natural light and this uh, room really works out well for me. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try to break this video up into sections, is I'm going to show you my actual film setup, how I get prepared for a video, then I'm going to show you my equipment that I use, my audio, my video uh, equipment and such, and I'm also going to show you my lighting and all of that, and then I'm going to show you how I take pictures for my Instagram channel as well. I'm not going to go too much into details on this video, so if if you want me to address a certain subject make sure to leave me a comment below and let me know if you have a question about a certain thing so first things first I'm gonna show you my setup how I film my video and all of the equipment I use for that and then we'll go through the other parts uh, of my filming and my photography process as well so let's get started so before I forget, I thought the first thing that I would show you is my audio equipment. And so I'm gonna take my mic off, so I'm gonna stop talking so you don't hear that weird noise. All right, so it's gonna sound a little muffled because I don't have my mic on, but I first wanted to show you my mic and how I record my audio because I don't wanna forget. And I thought if I do it now, then I can keep my mic on and you guys will know how I get the quality of sound that I do. Um, to me, quality of sound is very important. Um, I knew starting out when I uh, started my YouTube channel, I wanted to have all my ducks in a row. I knew I, the sound I was going for, I knew the look I was going for, and I wanted to make sure that I achieved that. And I did it correctly because I really just wanted things to sound good and I wanted the picture quality to be exceptional as well and I still think I'm tweaking that process um, my audio is pretty good um, but my video of course I'm still making changes to make sure that I can get a really quality picture and so I don't use a standard mic like some may use I actually use a microphone and I just pin that on my shirt and then I do all of my audio recording from my iPhone which is just inside of the um, voice recorder notes and so what I have to do in my videos is I have to consolidate this with my uh, video because I don't use the audio from my camera because it doesn't sound like I want it to sound. And so um, that's how I record my audio. I just pin the mic on my shirt there and then I speak into the mic, of course. And then also um, once I'm done with the audio, then I'll take it and I'll uh, airdrop it to my MacBook and then I'll consolidate it with the video there. So I first just wanted to show you how I do my audio. And of course, I will link everything below just in case you're interested in any of these products that I mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my mic back to my shirt and then we'll get going with the rest of this video. I'm going to show you exactly what I do on a daily basis when I film and how I set everything up and I'll talk you through some of the products that I have purchased to um, achieve uh, my filming for YouTube. All right, so this is the board here that I use for my YouTube videos. I used to film on my table with a whiteboard on top of it, which I still do have behind me here, but I find that this is better for me because it's smaller. And what I normally do is I keep it tucked over here so that it's out the way and I have this other workspace on my table to work with and this doesn't interfere. And then when I'm ready to film, I actually shimmy it out and I move it to the center of the table. So I move it over here so it's super easy to slide over and then I just pull it out to my desired so you see how easy that is to do and then of course on top of this board here we do have a piece of photography backdrop just a small one and I find that this works great for me it did come in like a pack of 10 or something like that with different colors I never use different colors my favorite backdrops are this white one here and then I do have a marble backdrop and a faux wood backdrop and so this is my other favorite backdrop. So as you can see on one side, 
it's like a faux wood look and then on the other side is the marble look and it's all one piece and so I just lay this down here depending on the side that I choose that I want to film on so it'll either be on that side or it'll be on this side and so this works out really well for me it's the perfect size and then I just roll it up and I stick it over in my corner here where I keep all of my other um, supplies for film and um, for video and photography so the next thing that I do during this video process or setting everything up to film is I pull out my light. Now I keep my lights here, one here in the corner, and then I keep my other light over here in the opposite side. And so I've got them both there. I basically just pull them in right here and so that way I have one on either side. So I will show you how that setup looks. And lastly, I need my stool. So my stool is stored under my table right here and so when I'm ready to film I just pull the stool out and then I put it right there in the middle right here and that is where I sit so I've got my lights here one on the left and one on the right then I've got my stool there my board is pulled out to the desired length because sometimes I pull it in or push it in depending on how I want to sit. And then above it, I've got my camera sits up here, which I'm using it now so you're not able to see that, but I'll insert a clip. So this is the full setup here. As you can see, I've got my camera mounted because I wanted to show you how it looked with my camera mounted. I do use a Canon SL2 and of course I'll link all that below. This is a wide angle lens, which I purchased separately, which I needed to be able to film the Big Happy Planner because it needs more of a wider view. And so I wasn't able to use the lens that came with the camera. And I do have several other lenses, which I purchased separately as well, but I don't too much use those unless I am in the video because I like to have the background blurred out. So I do have the 50 millimeter lens for that. And then we've got my ring light up there as well. So next is my computer. My computer is sitting over there for the moment and that's where it stays for the most part. So I'll show you how I set all that up. So what I do basically is I just slide my computer over here because I need to be able to see myself on screen and it is actually plugged up back here. So I keep it plugged up there and I just pull it in like that. So my camera sits right here above and then we've got my computer down here and then there's a cord here that I need to plug into my laptop, which is this side of the cord. And you can see that above it just hangs there because normally my camera is up there but again you can't see that because I'm using the camera this side here actually plugs into the camera above and so that's how that sits and so normally the camera stays up there and I have it pushed back in the corner over there so that way that's where it can stay until I'm ready to use it and so just to kind of talk about the equipment that I use this right here there's two parts of it the back part here which is this part this is actually the ring light, as you can see. So that is the ring light here. And then this front part is the actual place where I house the camera that points down. This is a mic stand. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen that before, but I did some research and I found on YouTube a way to point straight down because in doing my research, I found that the tripods weren't still a sure bet in terms of getting it to point down properly. And so I came across this YouTuber that said he just used a mic stand. And so that's what I've got there. So if you can see, just to give you a closer look of the mic stand, this pulls out, this can lower and raise, and it can also twist. And so I've got it set to the appropriate spot here so that way it can film straight down and it's it's perfect and so I don't change anything with those settings so again this front part here all of this which as you can see it, it goes across like a T all of that across there is a mic stand which is cool right so that's a hack for you so if you're looking for a way to film an overhead shot, a mic stand is the perfect option for you. And so I just keep all of that plugged in. As you can see, I've got a plug running back here, but it doesn't get in the way. And so typically, again, I just keep everything plugged up. My plug is right here that goes to the ring light. And again, the cord stays there for my camera. I normally, again, keep my camera plugged into the top there, right here. And um, it just stays there until I'm ready to use it because I'm always just filming overhead shots. I don't typically film anything where I have to take the camera off of the stand. And so you do need two parts to that. Um, once you buy the mic stand, you need this little adapter here, which again, I will link it so that way you know exactly what you need to purchase. 
and I think total for everything was like maybe like 25 30 bucks so that is much cheaper than buying those expensive tripods which still may end up not working out so again mic stand ring light that's all I've got here and what I do again you saw me move it over here is I just take it when I'm done with it and I push it back against the corner and it works out perfectly that way so I love this setup. And again, I still have full use of my table. If I have to do any craft projects, any orders or anything like that, it works out perfectly. And so again, that is my computer. I use a MacBook Pro. And then I've also got my iMac here in the background just in case I need to do bigger projects or I need more space, I can do that as well. And so typically again, what I'm doing when I film a video is I'm going to upload the video from my camera to my MacBook. And then I also need to airdrop myself from my phone, the audio. And that is important because again, we don't use the audio from the camera. And it doesn't take up that much space because I'm already in a little bit of tight quarters as it is. So I needed a setup that wasn't gonna take up that much space. So that's how everything looks when I'm sitting at the table. And um, I can close the door if I need to because my husband did install a barn door here. As you can see, it's not completely finished the way I want it to be. But I can close this room off because when the kids get loud, I don't want that background noise in my uh, video to interfere with the quality. So that is my video setup. And then when I do my photos, I do them right here. Um, normally this isn't out unless I just finished filming a video. Normally it is tucked away over to the side and I just pull it forward and push it back as needed. And that is where I take my pictures. And so my video and my photography setup is one and the same. And I just turn the lights on from the side and the ring light on from up above and we're good to go. So let me show you how the lighting looks when everything is turned on. So you see how bright that is? It's the perfect amount of light. Plus I've got natural light coming in from the background. So whenever I do a video where I'm in the video, then I sit on this chair and it, normally it's up the, against the backdrop here with my Ikea shelves. Addison put a sticky note there. So I'm normally sitting back against this backdrop or this backdrop here and the natural light comes in very well. And then I also use my box lights to give me a little bit more light. So again, I'll put everything in the description box in terms of what I purchased, but these are two box lights and then a ring light. And I do have two more box lights and I have like three or four umbrella lights. So I'm, I'm a little bit addicted to collecting camera equipment. I also do have two lights in the back there, one there, one there. I'll show you how those look. Typically I only use those when I'm filming at night because I need just a little bit of extra light. So I'm gonna show you how those look when, they, when they're turned on. So as you can see, when I turn those on, I have a lot of light. So I'm gonna put something in um, on the spot where I shoot and I'm gonna show you how it looks with the lights on and with the lights off. So you're not gonna be able to see a full overhead shot because you know how they look in my videos, but I'm just gonna pull the camera up a little bit just to show you the difference with the light on and the difference with the lights off. So as you can see, that is a really good amount of light, right? It's perfect. So that is with the light on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights off and show you how it looks with the lights off. So you see the difference in the light being on and off. Now again, I do get a lot of natural light from these two windows here. So technically I could probably be fine with it filming in this amount of light, but I'm just a little bit extra and I like to really, really stand out a little bit more. And I knew that I wanted to have my lighting on point and again, my audio on point as well. So that's why I decided to get the ring light and the two box lights. Again, I only use those lights in the back there at night typically, or if it's raining, overcast or anything like that, and I just need a little bit of extra light. Or if I can't use my ring light, because sometimes I can't use my ring light because it gives off a funny glare if I have a plastic wrap on something or a shiny cover or something like that. So I'm not able to use my ring light. And so in that case, I would use those two lights there in the back and they work out just fine. So I purchased a lot of stuff. So again, I'll leave it all in the description box just in case you're interested. I'll leave those lights. I'll leave my ring light, my box lights. I'll leave everything just so you can know exactly what I use. So that is probably my most asked question is what camera do you use? What software do you edit in? How do you film your videos? And so I thought I was overdue for this video. So again, that's how everything looks with no light on. And um, the film setup is just uh, perfect for my needs right now and so as I grow my needs may change but right now I think this is the perfect setup 
So I'm not gonna talk you through how I edit my videos on my MacBook. I will do a separate video for that. So if you wanna see that, make sure to leave a comment below and let me know if that's something that you want to see. Um, I'm just talking you through like my equipment, how I film just on a basic scale. So I'm gonna show you my camera bags and all of my supplies here, which I have tucked back in the corner right here. I've got a lot of stuff back there, um, but I just thought I would show you just kind of where I store everything. And so what I've got back here are some backdrops, which are over here in the corner. Those are all backdrops. Again, I told you the white one that I currently use, it came with multiple colors. So those are all wrapped right there. And then within there, I have that faux wood backdrop and the marble one that I just showed you. And then um, I also have my one tripod there. I'm using my other tripod. So I'll try to insert a clip of the tripod that I'm using right now. And then these are all my supplies, light box, extra light boxes, extra supplies, backdrop stand, and all that stuff is in here because when I do my photo booths, as you guys know, my husband and I have a photo booth business. So I try to keep everything there so that way we can go and head to the party and I don't have to pack all that stuff up again. So that's what's in these bags. It's just really light bulbs, extra supplies, backdrop stands, things like that. And then in terms of filming my uh, photos, I do have a hack because I used to see people with those backdrops um, that were colored and I I couldn't find them online besides these colors here which I'll show you what's included because it's very limited in the color selection so it has like brown I never use it's got black here it's got red so some of these colors I just will never use so I wanted to have some other options for backdrops as well so I'm gonna share with you another hack um, the first hack was that mic stand um, that to me is just brilliant so um, hats off to the youtuber that made that initial discovery so as you can see some of these colors I, I just won't use I use the gray I use the pink I use the blue sometimes and then I use the white sometimes I may use the cream as well so it's very um, limited in the color selection and just some of the stuff I just will never use but these are perfect they're the perfect size to film planner stuff now to film other stuff they're not the perfect size but as you can see they're a really good size and then what I do outside of that to take photos is I use tablecloths but I use the good quality tablecloths from like Party City or some of the the party stores I don't use the ones from Walmart because to me they're just too flimsy these give off a better color because they're thicker and so this is what I use for my photography backdrops um, to take pictures of my planner and things like that for Instagram so as you can see the color options are better they're lighter and so I just put that across the table. I'll just show you a quick example. Just overlay it right on top of this because I don't want to move this. I want this to stay stationary. So I just put it right there on top. And I'll put my planner and put it right on top of there. And then of course I've got all my lights and everything on and that is how I take pictures for Instagram. Normally I do just the white backdrop because I like a more crisp look. But if I want a colored look, then that is what I'm using. Either those backdrops that I showed you that are actual photography backdrops, or I'll pull a tablecloth here and that works out just fine. You just gotta make sure that you edit it properly, the photo, and make sure that you don't take a picture in the wrong spot like where there's wrinkles, because that's gonna show in your photo as well. So that's hack number two. Not that this is a hack video. I just wanted to show you my film setup, and then I'll just take it and I'll roll it back up and I'll put it right back in that corner. There's actually a couple of other backdrops here that I don't really use, like some of these, um, there's some wrapping paper back there and then some backdrops in the back I don't really use. And then I do have more backdrops down here in this bin. I've got a lot of stuff in there. So I'm not gonna go through that on this video. It's just my camera bag right there where all my supplies are in, my lenses and all that good stuff. And then we've got a light bulb there, my headphones are in there. There's a lot of stuff in there. So I don't wanna pull that out now. But if you wanna see what's inside of there, make sure to drop me a comment below and let me know if you wanna see and you wanna break down of all of this stuff that's down here back in the corner I've also got my ring light box right there or where it came in so that's what I used to travel with and so this is just really a lot of travel stuff for my photo booths and then this is the main bin that I'm in every day to pull my camera supplies out to do my setup and to um, just pull what I need my camera goes in there sometimes if I'm not um, using it or if I'm traveling with it of course it's gonna go in that camera bag as well I've got some gliders in there I've got some handheld things to make my videos more smooth and not as shaky I've got a lot of stuff in there so I can go over that with you as well if you'd like I wanted to also sh tell you the name of the mic it's called the U mic 
and this is actually one of my favorite tools for when I don't want my video shaky like earlier on in the video when I started out this is what I was using to kind of show you my craft room and kind of where everything is stored so I love this as well so I'll make sure to put this in the description box but that stays in this box until I'm ready to use it so I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to to talk you through I think that is pretty much it for this video and how I have everything set up. And so again, my ring light is there. And then I've got my two box lights, one here, one on the other side. And then I have those two lights in the back just in case I need a little extra light. As you can see, my MacBook is plugged up into my camera. And so it stays plugged into my camera and then this cord just dangles when I turn my laptop back there because that's where I normally sit because my desk is right here behind it. And I like to turn that way to work there and then turn this way to work at this table. This is an Ikea table, which is just two tables put together. So this is separate from this. And then I ordered the glass separately and I um, had it custom cut and I put it right on top of the two tables so that they would stay together and not move apart. Because again, like I said, because as you can see here, there are two tables, one here and one there. So I needed to have the glass on top so that way they can stay together and I can work on it as one big table. This is also an Ikea table. I just didn't put the legs on it. It's the same table as this table here, except this one does have the legs on it and some pedestals so that my carts can fit under there. Of course, I'm gonna do a craft room tour soon so that you can see all that. Um, and so this is just that same thing. I just use it without the legs so that I can push it over and pull it back to where I need to be. And so that is the full entire setup. And when I do my photography, I use my iPhone to take pictures. So I just turn on my box lights here, turn on my ring light above, these two lights if I need to. And this is where I'm taking my photo. And of course, I'm going to use one of the backdrops if I need to. If not, this is the backdrop that I use. And I just take it with my camera phone, point it down, take a picture. So let me show you how the lights look from my iPhone. So as you can see, sometimes you do need those back lights there because there's a bit of overcast outside. It's supposed to rain today. So sometimes I need those lights, but let's see if the ring light will do the trick. So as you can see, there's a lot of light there, right? So I'll just take my phone, put it into frame just like this, and I will go ahead and take the picture. And this gives me just the right amount of light that I need to have good quality video and photos. And of course, I'm still always tweaking and trying to make changes so that I can get better and so that the quality can get better. But I think starting out, this is a pretty good setup. So that's it guys. This is the full shebang. I know you guys have been wanting to see this and you really had a lot of questions for me in terms of how I have my camera and my film set up. So that is it. So again, let me know if you have any questions about this setup in the description box below. I'll be more than happy to share with you any details that maybe I forgot to mention in this video. Hopefully I covered everything and hopefully you enjoyed this video. You got a lot of value out of it and you found some things that you can use to make your YouTube videos better. Um, again, I thought I'd show you the tripod here. This is the tripod that I use. Love this tripod. I've gone through several tripods that didn't work out for me. So I was happy to finally find one that did. So that is it for this video, guys. Make sure to drop me a comment below let me know what you think let me know if you have any questions and of course give me a big thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel so thanks again guys for watching i really appreciate you stopping by and i hope to see you on the next video